Good morning, everybody from Zaragoza in Spain. My name is Rowena Hennigan, and I work on and I work under the brand name Row Remote. And I am delighted to be taking this session, Hacking the Personality of a Remote Worker. Um, I'm just going to get comfortable here and start my slides for you all. So um, this morning, it's quite early here, so I have my coffee and I'm all getting settled in. And um, I'm welcoming you to my session. And it's a good opportunity for me to practice my public speaking skills. <laughs> so that's one of the things I'll be talking about today, communication skills. And I'll be doing that in practice this morning with you for these 20 minutes. You can Google my name. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to find some more information about this, about this uh, set of slides I'm going to present, the presentation. And um, I've also got some evidence-based research in here for my presentation. But the first thing I want to say, and it's already been uh, spoken about in some of the earlier sessions this morning, is about power skills. Well, some of you may know these as soft skills. So Gilad and Ronan earlier in one of their sessions mentioned about how soft skills are really important for remote workers. And that's what I'm demonstrating today by doing this webinar, doing this talk, because it can be quite disconcerting talking to yourself to a screen with no one else um, near you. I know you're all virtually there listening. That's one of the communication skills that you need to work on, one of the soft or power skills you need to work on as a remote worker. So during this session, I'd like to give lots of practical examples of how I see soft skills and power skills being so important for remote workers today, alongside, alongside those technical and uh, skill-based competencies like coding, developing, and all the things that we've covered during the, the marathon session you've been on on this fantastic conference. So... To start off and get a little bit um, of an introduction, I'm based in Zaragoza in Spain, but I am a lecturer and an educator, educator, educator and I'm based um, mainly from home. I work in a co-working space, but I'm currently on lockdown with coronavirus in Spain, and I deliver all of my work remotely. So I deliver all my education and webinars and e-learning remotely, and I've been working remotely since 2007. And one of my main areas of interest is how we build these skills um, around those straightforward coding and technical skills, these soft skills or power skills, as I like to call them. So let's get the science out of the way to start with. And um, a lot of what I'll be going through in the 20 minutes is based on evidence based research. So what I mean by that is I've taken um, some research from uh, a, a contact of mine called Roberta Sawaski and her colleague Ian McRae and there's three um, one article and two reports I'll be referring to during the for most of the slides and they've done research using 250 respondents looking at remote work competencies and also personality and performance of remote workers and more recently in February a summary article came out from that research from HR magazine in the UK and what what that article is titled is what makes a high potential remote worker. But you want to hack, right? You've joined this because you want to hack um, being a successful remote worker. So what I've done is I've taken those competencies and skills and I've broken them down into actionable, practical advice, hopefully for those of you who are listening, so that you can move along and take what's recommended, what's pr proven, um, as skills that remote workers show and personality traits they demonstrate and you can start to fake it until you make it and um, I mean the interesting thing is that it isn't in front of you you see this uh, slide that has code on it again a lot of these skills that we're going to talk about over these few minutes are not things that involve sitting at your computer computer coding and developing there are skills that you need to foster and harness perhaps outside sitting at your computer. Maybe some video calls would work because they would be interactive with people to practice communication skills, for example. 
and public speaking like I'm doing today. But in general, a lot of these skills have to be worked separately off of sitting, just coding and developing. They're soft skills, they're cold, you'll hear them refer to as soft skills and I've got a nice sheep's tactile sheep's coat or dog's coat for animal fur here to demonstrate that. But I like to refer to them as power skills because I believe that they give us, um, they give us power, these skills. So let's have a look at what, uh, through the research I've mentioned already, what kind of personality profile or what these remote workers demonstrate. So they're excellent communicators. They're highly conscientious, they're resilient to stress, and they're keen to learn. And what I'm going to do over these following slides is break this down for you. So communication skills, we don't just mean being able to present like this um, to an audience. We also mean testing your skills. We also mean active listening. We also mean picking the right channel. We also mean explicit communication in terms of how we communicate. And then to take um, a quote straight from one of the reports that I've mentioned earlier, remote workers show significantly, significantly higher conscientiousness than the general population. Their motivation, their discipl discipline and their capacity for long term planning is much higher than the general population. So that conscientiousness is key part of what we're going to speak about today as well. But to be conscientious, to be self-disciplined, you also need to be motivated to do something. So the motivation and our intrinsic motivations are also really important. And already on some of the talks today, we've heard about when you're trying to attract um, remote workers through benefit packages as a company or through job descriptions when you're hiring, we have to look at what would motivate those remote workers. And obviously we all have our own personal motivations and remote work in itself often leads to flexibility. And that's something that we can, you know, we can harness because many people are looking for that in modern life and we can package it up as a benefit. In terms of conscientiousness, everyone's um, interpretation of this is different. And it's something that can nearly always be, be honed or practiced. So in, in terms of how testing your conscientiousness and how you apply yourself to different tasks, that's something as well that remote workers are partic particularly good at doing um, by default. One of the things that's also quite interesting in the research is it shows that they sh uh, remote workers have a high potential for emotional adjustment, that they react well to stressors. So again, this is something that individually we all we either can maybe use some sort of test to try and figure that out. But most of us who have some level of self-awareness probably know how good we are, how emotionally adjusted we are under stress. And curiosity. Curiosity is this basis of being curious about everything in the world, trying to figure things out, maybe sometimes known as an engineer um, brain approach, an engineer's type brain approach, but also, also being a constantly learning is a fundamental part of um, curiosity. And Remote workers that are successful and high aptitude are really open to constantly learning and constantly improving. So in summary, looking at these remote workers, um, key skills or personality traits, they have these good communication skills, these honed communication skills, from all different types of channels, like I've mentioned, and ways of communicating, and they're good at active listening. They're conscientious about their work and their approach and they're motivated um, to get their work done. They've got self-discipline and they have great attention to detail within that. They deliver high quality work. They're good at adjusting and being emotionally resilient to stress. So they've got high emotional adjustment and they display high levels of curiosity and they're always learning. They're always learning. Levels of curiosity and they're always learning. They're always learning. So moving on to the the structure around the the different um moving around the structure 
um, of different remote companies. And what I find interesting when we look at the structure of remote companies, we can also see how um, they support some of these skills that we've gone through and these personality traits. And when I mention remote companies here, I mean the structured established ones, the 100% remote ones who have um, very, very clear and transparent communications and they just uh, they illustrate this through what they present online through trust and transparency they have explicit communication within their cultures and their values they have extensive documentation within the within their their operations they give their workers autonomy they have constant feedback loops Many of them are open source within the tech community, as we know, and they encourage and support that curiosity in their workers in terms of how they, in terms of how they, um, how they enable them to spend time figuring something out or or um, spending time on new projects. So they support that within their culture, and that's something that's really of interest as well when we look at. How, if you're trying to be, find a remote job, <laughs> move into remote work. So we've gone through the skills you may need, but it's also interesting to look at that in relation to what the remote companies are looking for and how their structure support, supports that and has maybe fostered that through the time. So now in to 10 minutes, now I want to switch over to reflect onto you and to look at, for you to spend a minute um, now and afterwards, hopefully, being inspired to look at yourself and ask yourself, do you know your own ingredients? What makes you up um, in your personality and your traits? What are the things that are mixed in there that make up your personality? And it's easy to stop here and say, when you do a little self analysis and you maybe um, make a list of the things you know you have and the, the gaps you may have, to wonder if it's nature versus nurture, to wonder if you know, well, if I don't have great self-discipline, so I'm not going to be able to foster it. But I don't believe that. And as an educator, I don't believe it's not possible with some application and some action that you can't foster any of those skills that might be missing. And how do I suggest you do that? Well, you need to use something we call in more jargony terms in academia and in and leader, leadership management and skills development, we say self-reflection observing your behavior, your feelings during a day, during a week, in particular related to those topics, uh, those headings I've just said, how you communicate, how you, um, how conscientious you are, um, how uh, you're reacting in terms of your emotions, and also how curious you are, how are you figuring things out that you may um, be presented with certain issues and how you're looking for solutions. So you need to log it and start reflecting on those different things so that you can start to notice where you may have gaps or what I'd like to say is not big gaps but areas for improvement. And then what is a, um, the best thing to do is to take decisive action. So when we say take decisive action, I like to think about or what, how can you take practical actions um, in terms of improving those different areas. So a good example would be you haven't public, um, done public speaking much, that you put yourself forward um, for something. Another example would be to join Toastmasters, the International Support Group for Public Speaking. Um, you're not great at documentation, say, uh, on projects. There was some talk about documentation on some of the earlier presentations. And um, therefore, maybe put yourself forward uh, to shadow someone on a project where you can see someone who's skilled at documentation. So taking these decisive action to improve in those different areas that may be needed is a really, really good way to start to build through and take, move those actions along. But how are you going to keep on that path? How are you going to be motivated? Um, not my driver, I've popped in here, this Rolex, I know it is some people's mo motivation. Um, but you need to figure out what your motivation is. Um, and we all have our personal ones. For some pe people it is a Rolex, for some people it is free time, experiences, 
um, getting recognition, getting certificates, whatever it may be. But that's also up to you as well. So maybe when you're writing in your journal and you've got your little actions and your plans where you want to improve, well, how are you going to reward yourself? How are you going to drive yourself to those little motivations along the way to help you build to those different goals and move along the actions? But fundamentally, and why I use this graphic, is those power skills or those soft skills, those things that we need to develop need action. So I, I'm back at the start, I was saying, don't be tempted just to sit at your computer talking. Uh, it really, really helps to talk to people and get support and to take more physical action rather than just sitting and writing about it or thinking about what you need to improve. Try and move those into more meaningful actions with a start and a middle and an end with a goal with rewards along the way as well. And that's one of the ways to keep you motivated along these small improvements that you may make. And I know a lot of people who might be listening are also quite used to feedback loops if they're tech, technical or within the development community. So think of your own creative and unusual or innovative feedback loops. So think of things um, that you could put in, little tests that you could put in, um, like the example I gave about going forward for some public speaking with Toastmasters or um, setting some actionable goals in terms of putting yourself under a little bit of stress. But do it, for example, with a buddy. OK, and here's a picture of a clown, two clownfish together. So. If you find a buddy to work through these things with someone, as so, as some people like to formalize it more and use some sort of a career coach, but you might just find through your own network there's someone else that says, yeah, I'm, I'm wanting to improve my, my power skills in, in, in work and my day-to-day -day, uh, skills, these traits I know about that are important for remote working. So can you buddy with me and let's let's work on it together. And that way you can support each other through this as well and through working through the different um, goals. And then I've put on this slide because I find that sometimes people, they start to observe the different things they need to improve on and they might make some quite good actions and definitive steps along the way. They might draw up a quite good plan of for where they want to work on these different skills and develop them. But they they don't put it into their routine. They don't schedule it in. And once you've written those actions down, a, a really good tip I find, and you might find this helps, it's like a training plan for exercise. People often say if they do it with a buddy and they set the times in their diary, they're more likely to stick to it. And that could be the same with this with improving these different um, power skills. So I would recommend you routine them, you schedule them, you get them into your day-to-day -day routine or your week-to-week -week routine so that you can um, definitely make time for them and work them into your schedule. You're building your toolkit, okay? You're building your toolkit. And the more you reach out and consider these as practical skills, um, the more and, and, and power skills, things that are going to make your toolkit stronger, the more you change your mindset to that and, and you do schedule them, get a body, get into a, a proper routine, the more you're honing your skills and all, all moreover and at the end, the more you'll start to notice what else needs to be improved and it'll become, it'll become part of your day-to-day -day routine in terms of improvement. Setting those goals and building them in will become second nature. So I am going to um, just move over onto my screen so I can see my feed um, properly. And I'm over looking over to see if there's any Q and A on here. So I'm going to give it a second while I'm doing that, and then I am going to uh, finish up if there isn't any Q&A, because I'm just on just on the 20 minutes just now. So I don't see any questions coming in at the moment. So I'm going to pop back over to my slides, because I have a special slide uh, at the end. 
And just before I do that, um, again, this, this is being recorded, but I will have a summary um, piece of information that I can share with anyone who's online or watching this after that's interested. It's probably going to be a blog post which summarises this deck and links to all the research that I've mentioned um, earlier on the slide. So I want to thank Ian Gray and Rob, Roberta Sawaski for their research, which motivated me to think about this more deeply and put together this deck. And what I would like to do now in conclusion is just say a fantastic congratulations to everyone who's put this together. So I joined some of the talks yesterday and I want to congratulate James and Kleena and everyone from Nearform up for supporting as well. It's been fantastic, it really has, and Flux. It's amazing to see how the remote work community has come together over these um, last couple of weeks, and it, it really um, keeps me motivated and inspired day to day as we're all working through this. Um, I'd like to say that we should all celebrate any speakers that have been involved, anyone who's supported in the background. Super, super effort, really, really good. And it just shows you what can be done. And um, I'd just like to thank everyone and say to you all, have, have a really good day.